In this video, I'm going to walk through step by step how to turn this into this. In the process, I'm going to make a nicer looking inspector that is also easier to use. And I'm going to do it without a custom inspector script. It's all going to happen with just a handful of attributes from Odin Inspector. The game manager that I've created here has some fields that could be used in a wide variety of games, such as game state, turns remaining, UI objects for different game states, music, sound effects, enemy data, and enemy spawn points. I've also added some basic functions to play music and sound effects, as well as handle or deal with the change of state of the game itself. If you'd like to follow along, you can download the game manager script from a link in the video description below. To start the makeover, I need to add the Inspector namespace to access the Odin attributes. With that done, I'll add a box group attribute to visually group some fields together. I'm going to call the group game state info. I'll add this attribute to both the game state and the turns remaining. With the grouping attributes, it doesn't matter if the fields are all grouped together in the script. Odin will group them together in the inspector. However, within that group, Odin will put them in the same order as they are in the script. Now already this is looking better, but we can go a couple steps further, particularly with the game state enum. Adding the attribute enum toggle buttons turns the enum from a dropdown to a set of toggle buttons. This combined with an on value changed attribute allows you, the developer, to not only see the value in the inspector, but also change the state to test the functionality of your code. The on value changed attribute, in this case, will call the function state change if the enum value is changed in the inspector. The function uses a switch statement to run different code based on the value of the enum. Fields such as game state and turns remaining may be best utilized if they are static fields. If your design requires or works best with static fields, you can add the additional attribute of show inspector to get access to the fields in the inspector if they are private or if they are static. Now I just love tabs. They clean, tidy, and organize the inspector very quickly. Just like other group attributes, the tab group requires just a name. In this case, the names will control which fields are shown together in which tab. I'm going to add UI, music, as well as sound effects, tab group attributes to the corresponding fields. And the results are pretty great. With these fields tidied up, let's add a little more functionality. All of the UI objects are going to be required and they need to be objects that are currently in the scene. We can force this requirement by the addition of two attributes, scene objects only and required. These can be added on separate lines or they can be added inline like so. Adding attributes inline is not limited to these two attributes and can be done with any attribute, but doing so is a matter of personal preference and style of how you like your code to look and read. Now I don't know about you, but sometimes my scenes can get pretty crowded and it can be hard to find a given object. You can of course search the scene or with Odin you can click at the pin icon to bring up an inspector. But sometimes you want to find the actual object in the scene and you want to do it pretty quickly. So I've added a simple select canvas function to my game manager that will select a given canvas object in the hierarchy. Then with the inline button, we can call this function for each of the required canvas objects in the game manager. Pretty slick, pretty handy. Next, let's move on to the current music clip field. I'm going to add a space attribute to add a space between this field and the one above it for more visual clarity. Since the field is private, I'll add a show in inspector attribute so that it appears in the inspector. I can then add a value dropdown attribute that will allow me to select the value of the current music clip from the list of the music clips. All I have to do is add the name of the list that contains the music clips and Odin creates a dropdown menu for me. This is a huge time saver. No more digging through the scene or project files. You're just selecting from a predefined list. To continue adding functionality, I can add an inline button attribute that calls a play music function. This allows you, the developer, to quickly play any clip in the music list and ensure that you have the right clip selected in your game manager. It is important to note that if the function has an input type, the field type of the inline button must match that type. To show off a little bit more of what Odin can do, you can achieve a similar result by adding the inline editor attribute with the argument inline editor modes dot small preview. If you have Unity set to autoplay selected clips, then when you expand the inline editor, the clip will play, and when you collapse it, the clip will stop playing. 
pretty handy, pretty compact, and a nice way to test that you've got the right audio in your game manager. To add similar functionality to the sound effects clips, I'm going to add an inline button that calls the function play sound effect and give the button a label of test by adding a second string argument to the attribute. This allows quick testing of each sound effect in the inspector. The last remaining fields are the enemy prefab, which is a generic enemy object that will have data injected into it, enemy data, which is a list that contains scriptable objects for each type of enemy, and spawn points, which is a list of the spawn points in the current scene. Now as a side note, the enemy data scriptable object will be the topic of a future video, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. Now I want to group these last three fields into tabs, but in this case, I want to form a second group of tabs. This can be done by adding a group name before the tab name within the tab group attribute, like so. Then on the enemy data field, I'll add the attribute inline editor with the argument inline editor modes dot GUI only, which will show a collapsible editor for the enemy data, which allows easy modification of the data from within the game manager. Since the enemy data is a scriptable object and the enemy prefab is also a project asset, I'll add the attribute assets only to doubly ensure that only project assets are added to those fields. For the spawn points, I'll add scene objects only as all the spawn points will need to be in the current scene. Now, neither of these last two attributes will directly change the look of the inspector, but they can be useful all the same, especially if you come back to your code after weeks or months of development on some other part of your game. The last thing I want to add to the game manager is an enemy spawn button. And in this case, I'll be adding a button to a function. I personally find adding buttons to functions to be a great debugging tool that speeds up my development. So in this case, above the spawn random enemy function, I'll add the button attribute. And in this case, I'll add a button size argument to create a medium sized button. I'll then add a tab group attribute so that this button is grouped with the enemy data. And finally, just for fun, I'll add the GUI color attribute, which can be added to any field to give the button a little more flair. So there you go. A few attributes have made a dramatic change to the game manager inspector. The choices are of course a matter of personal preference, but I think the end result is easier to read and far easier to use. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future tutorials, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below or on the DevDog Discord server. And with that, until next time, happy game designing.